Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. This is Gina. So I'm starting off with a new format without an intro and see if you guys like it better. You can get to the news faster. And also I'm going to be adding a patron account or a Patreon so that you can become a patron pretty soon and you guys can win prizes and take part in monthly group chats and things like that, all kinds of fun stuff. So Keep a lookout for that, but I have breaking news in the Ghislaine Maxwell story. Her attorneys have once again petitioned the court to ask that additional documents remain under seal for a little while longer. Um, earlier this month, for those of you who haven't been following this as closely and haven't listened to my podcast or, or watched the videos, earlier this month, Judge Loretta Preska ordered that, among other documents, there were two depositions that would be publicly released. One was that of Ghislaine Maxwell herself. The other was from an alleged victim who provided a sworn deposition. Maxwell appealed that decision, and she was granted additional time before a final judgment is made on whether or not those documents can go public. But we were expecting to see a final decision on those documents, I believe, in the early part of September, so, you know, less than a month away. However, there are additional documents outside of those two depositions that were also going to be unsealed over the next few weeks after all, all of the parties who may have been named in those documents had been granted enough time to object to the public release if they chose to do so. Well, last night, Maxwell's attorneys filed a document with Judge Preska claiming that the documents need to remain sealed for an, at least another three weeks. And they're claiming that this is due to, quote, critical new information that they have claimed to have unearthed. They also say that they aren't at liberty to share the information at this time because apparently this information is subject to a protective order in her criminal case. So according to Maxwell's legal counsel, this new information will impact both her criminal sex trafficking case as well as her civil defamation case. And they're now engaged in conversations with the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York asking for a modification of this protective order so that they can share this new, quote, critical information, as they put it. So, you know, we'll see what happens with these documents, whether or not that's going to be granted. But in the meantime, after that request was made to the court, her attorneys are also asking or made the request that she be removed from solitary confinement and they want her to be put back in with the general population. So they're complaining of, quote, uniquely onerous conditions. Her attorney complained that she was under 24-hour surveillance by security cameras and guards. They said that the guards are taking notes about all of her activities, including phone calls with her legal counsel that her cell is searched multiple times a day, that she's been the subject of numerous body scans. And they said, you know, she was just recently taken off suicide watch where apparently she was being woken up every few hours and checked on and they made her wear special clothing. So her attorney stated, quote, Ms. Maxwell does not seek special treatment at the MDC but she does ask that she not be specially disfavored in her treatment in detention, especially when it comes to preparing her defense to conduct that allegedly took place over 25 years ago. Really? Cry me a freaking river. 25 years ago. What the hell does that have to do with anything? You know, Geraldo Rivera was out there making the same argument. These women who were victimized as children have been living in a nightmare their entire lives. They've been in a living hell for decades. And these selfish, greedy attorneys who, let's be clear, they took this case. This is not a matter of, oh, wow, these are public defenders and they had no choice, this was the case they were given. No, they chose this woman's case. 
they looked at this, they looked at the history of Epstein, they looked at her history and what is known and how many victims have come forward and pointed the finger directly at her and they said, yeah, that's the person I want to defend. That's who I want as a client. I want to defend the actions of a credibly accused pedophile. I want to defend and protect a woman who is accused of raping children as young as 14 years old. I want to protect and defend a woman who is accused of acting almost like a pimp and going out and coercing and manipulating young impressionable girls desperate for attention, desperate for affection, girls who had no family to count on in many cases, girls who were already going through hell at home potentially. I want to defend the woman who went out and preyed upon those children and lured them into a den of depravity so that they could be raped in some cases and otherwise victimized by a child predator. That's who I want as a client. Really? Oh, I am so sorry that Ghislaine Maxwell is having a tough go of it. I don't care. Thoughts and prayers. Womp womp and thoughts and prayers. Isn't that what we do about gun violence in this, in this country? So that's all I got for Ghislaine Maxwell. Who are these people? Who are these attorneys who step up to the plate? I mean, just like, just like Alan Dershowitz and Ken Starr, who stepped up and defended Epstein in his 2007 case. I mean, really, that's what you want to be. That's, that's what you dream of when you decide that you want to go to law school and become an attorney and spend, what, 8, 12 years studying and taking your exam for the bar and becoming an attorney. You want to grow up to be a pedophile protector? Really? Is that what you dream of as a kid? It's so gross. I, I get it. I understand that everyone has a right to a defense in this country. I know that everyone is entitled to a defense and to, to be represented, but God's sakes, I mean, let, let it just be a public defender. Why do you, why, why would you step up for this? Anyway, guys, that is where we're at. And uh, those are the requests that her attorneys have made in the last couple days. Anyway, as always, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will keep you guys informed. And again, keep a lookout. I will be posting information about that Patreon account. I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to Plants and Politics. The only way we can take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again.